Welcome back everybody to another episode of Let's Play Star Trek Online. So in the last episode we found out that we just made Rear Admiral Lower Half. So we are at level 40 in the game, only 10 away from Vice Admiral. And it's time to get our new Tier 5 ship, which is the highest end ships you can get in the game. So, first we need to talk with Admiral Quinn to get our promotion. And then speak to Lieutenant Laurel after this to get our new ship. So, we did, we did that, and now we have to go to the shipyard and speak to Laurel to get our new ship. Now, obviously, I've got the Galaxy class, the Enterprise D, and uh, the next ship up is the Enterprise E. So we are going to get that ship. It's an in-game uh, in ship. It's not a sea store ship. And uh, we're going to fly that for right now. So alright, I talked to her. That's basically all you have to do. And then the promotion's done. But we can go ahead and get our new ship. And um, we're going to select Rear Admiral Lower Half. And of course we're flying a cruiser. So our options for a uh, for Rear Admiral Lower Half is the Assault Cruiser, which is a Sovereign, uh, which uh, you'll know from the uh, Star Trek movies, and it's the Enterprise E, basically. It's the upgrade from the D. Um, you can also get a Star Cruiser, and they have different variants of uh, it that look pretty cool. Um, it's a big ship very big ship and it turns very slow or the advanced heavy cruiser retrofit um, which I had purchased as a sea store item and um, I can fly it now that I'm a rear admiral um, it's really cool but um, f until we get to vice admiral and we get our uh, you know vice admiral ship or figure out what we're gonna fly then um, I'm just going to keep going up the uh, class, you know, the classic ships we've been doing, the uh, classic cruisers. So I'll fly the Enterprise E here. And they got different variants. You can switch components around. You can make it look like the Noble or uh, Majestic. And of course, you can mix and mass match uh, components. But I'm going to go with the, uh, the, uh, just the normal Sovereign look to it. Um, you get plus five power to all subsystems. It's going to have a crew of 800, so it's a little less than the Enterprise D, but it's still got a really good hull of uh, 39,000. And uh, shield modifier is one. It's got a turn rate of seven. Uh, we're going to have lots of engineering console slots. Uh, three tactical now, which will be nice, and then two science. And uh, we got a full commander engineering station which will be nice and uh, so it's, it's a good layout it's a good ship very good ship to fly alright so we're going to take it and now it's ours okay you may have just noticed a little pause and a break there I just had a game crash <laughs> so welcome back again we just bought our new ship, so let's... Uh, I don't want to do war games yet. Go away. Alright, so let's strip my current ship. Because until I can replace all the weapons and everything on it, I may reuse a bunch of stuff. Even though it's level 8. Mark 8. Now I can use Mark 10 stuff, you see. Um, some of it I may reuse. So yeah, we're up to Mark 10 on uh, gear and equipment and so forth. What was that? Oh, that. Okay. Alright. So now that our old ship is stripped of its goodies we can go to the ship selector and go to my 
gondolier, apparently. <laughs> the uh, game wants us to have a ship called the Gondolier. But uh, obviously we're going to rename that. Alright, let's set it as current. And... Let's... Obviously I don't want it to be the Gondolier forever. We are going to have to change that name. And I'll have to think about it and see what may want to change it to. Um, in the meantime, let's get rid of all the stuff on here that it already has. Because all this is just um, Mark 8 standard stuff. And uh, we're obviously not going to be using any standard stuff. So let's just strip it bare. I wish there was like a delete everything button instead of having to right click and discard everything separately. Okay. Alright, first you'll notice we have four four weapons and four aft weapons. So we are definitely going to use, continue to use, because I really uh, like it, the uh, Harpang on our fore and aft. Uh, although I could use quantum torpedoes, they're pretty cool. Actually, to be, if you want to be cannon with this ship, quantum torpedoes would be what you would want to put on it. And um, now that I have more tactical options, it may be beneficial because I can do torpedo spreads and other things with um, with that. The only thing is, let me look at my skills real quick. Um, yeah, I did put skills into projectile weapons, so so I can so using those skills will uh, will uh, benefit. Okay, all right. So we may uh, go ahead and switch since you've already seen now how the harpings work and what they do, and that was pretty cool. We'll go ahead and put on some regular quantum torpedoes and I'll show you what things like Torpedo Spread does and uh, maybe High Yield, but definitely Torpedo Spread, that one's pretty fun. Um, so yeah, we'll get some Quantums on there for the fore and aft. And we've got a choice now, I mean we can continue to use our Polaron weapons or we can go with a different energy type now. We can go with Tetrion, you know, Plasma, um, everything else that's out there, um, anti-proton, um, phasers, regular, whatever. Um, so, we have options now. I think I may want to go with anti-protons, to be honest with you, uh, for this, uh, for this build on this ship. For now. Just something different. I mean, we've, we've seen what we've done, right? So I kind of want to change things up and show you other things you can do and other builds that work and so forth. So, um, the very first thing I know I'm going to do until I hit Vice Admiral is I want the Aegis set. The Aegis Deflector, Impulse, and Shield. And, um, and then we'll look at the weapons. Obviously I'm going to use my Scorpion Fighters and my Red Matter Capacitor. That stuff won't change. Um, everything else may change. The uh, Riemann Shield is still pretty cool, but um, I want to show you guys a different set that uh, came out before all the other sets uh, called the Aegis, which is uh, pretty cool. It also changes the look of the ship. It makes it look kind of Tron-like and uh, is really nice. So let's go to my favorite place, the Exchange. <laughs> Now that I can buy things by with dilithium now that I have some, um, but still I only have 8,000. I can't really buy much with that. So pretty much I'm just going to use my energy credits to buy stuff with, and I've got 6.7 million energy credits thanks to uh, all those things I was able to sell. So that will help us gear up our new ship and myself because I want a Mark 10 kit now and all that good all that good junk la 
la di la 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 we la la di Jumping through ESD, here we go, here we go. Somebody left their horda here, it's burning a hole in floor. Good old exchange where I spend all my money. Alright, first thing is, I told you guys, is the Aegis stuff. So we're going to go to... Ship mm, Deflector. And, yeah, Aegis Deflector Array, I didn't expect it would be cheap. It's uh, one million, and uh, one million for the Impulse Engine, and then the Shield is going to be... That's uh, Personal Shield. Wrong Shield. Ship Shield, where are you? And one million, so it's going to cost us... 3 million energy credits just to get the whole Aegis set. Now the cool thing about the Aegis set is that it is auto leveling so as we increase in grade all the way up to Vice Admiral they, there's, everything will get more powerful. Um, also it has really good specifications um, really good shield capacity and something called reactive shielding that engages when you have the whole set. Um, so for our purposes of going through up to uh, Vice Admiral until we can get the Borg stuff, um, I'm going to run Aegis for these next 10 levels. So it's going to cost us quite a bit of energy credits here, but um, I'm just going to do it. So I can show you guys anyway, because it's it's a really cool set. Okay, so well, let's put on the shield and the engine and the deflector. Okay. Now, before we do anything else, I will beam up and show you guys what that looks like because it does change the look of the ship. So the first thing it does, um, well you'll notice on the deflector, it adds this uh, cool looking graphic there. Um, on the impulse engines, it adds that effect that trails off the impulse engines, which looks really cool. And then if you can't tell, the entire ship now has blue lines all around it. These uh, er, like parts of it are highlighted in uh, blue lines there and up on top. If we, if we disable the visual, this is what the ship looks like without those uh, blue lines accenting the edges of everything. You know, it just looks plain. Um, like that and then you turn on the shield visuals you get those blue lines and under it which looks really cool and when you're in a dark environment it looks even better because they're more visible and if you change the ship um, style right now it's a very light color if you change the ship style to dark a dark color it makes those uh, uh, show even better so that's what it does visually and um, the powers you get from it, from it are called a Thoron Distortion Field and Reactive Shielding. So that's what you see right here. And uh, the Thoron Distortion Field, I'll let you guys read this really cool. The um, Thoron Distortion Field is passive, so you don't have to activate it. And uh, while you're moving, it uh, grants a 5% bonus defense by deceiving sensors into tar targeting Duranium Shadows. This combines with the Aegis Hyper Impulse Engine's bonus 5% defense to grant a total of 10% to your defense. So basically it's like 10% to your stealth, your defense, and um, uh, deceives their sensors. So that's just automatic on. And then with the whole set, which I'm using, you get the, what's called reactive shielding. When your shields are hit, reactive shielding has a chance to activate, which increases the resistance of the incoming damage type for a short time. 
reactive shield stacks and that's what makes this really cool it stacks up to 10 times and can resist against several damage types at once so when reactive shielding is working and you'll see it working you'll see it activated it will it can stack up to 10 times help against different energy types and it's basically a really powerful shield um, so this set is really good the um, impulse engines here flat out give 5% defense uh, you get plus 15 flight speed plus 7.9 flight turn rate so it's increased my flight turn rate from 7 so um, uh, that helps um, that's the full impulse specs the uh, deflector has uh, a plus five shield power setting so it automatically increases your shield power plus five just by having the uh, deflector on um, and it has you know everything you would ever need um, the shield um, is 6600 maximum shield capacity um, by default with 10% bleed through and it's not the best regeneration but still really good um, and right now I'm getting my shield capacity right now is 8,990 so that's better than a lot better than Jim Hadar's shield or anything like that um, it's one of the high highest capacity other than the Riemann shield. If I put the Riemann shield on, eight nine actually eight eight one eight with the Riemann shield. Eight eight one eight. And then the Asia shield is eight nine nine oh so it's higher with the Asia shield, so the Aegis, the Aegis combo and all that. Of course that was a Mark eight Riemann shield, but still um, Aegis is just a lot better and uh, yeah so once we get our other stuff you know buffed up on here and we can't we can't get the console yet that gives us maximum shield capacity or increases shield capacity until we are vice admiral I think but once we get that um, our capacity for shield will increase even more um, so once I get my other consoles on and everything we'll look back at all my resists and everything but um, basically that Aegis set is really cool and it looks awesome and I have flown really far 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 away from Starbase so let's go back so one thing I'm gonna do is darken the color of the ship and those Aegis lines will uh, show better but uh, yeah Dark at station. Uh, while we're right here, let's go change the color of my ship. I'm gonna make it the dark, the darkest color I can. And I'm not going to change around any of the components. I like the default Sovereign look. I think it just looks awesome. So here's the ship. It's on Sovereign by default. All we're going to do is change the uh, material. Type 1 is the lightest. Type 2 looks like that. Type 3 and then Type 4 is the darkest one. So we're going to go to the Type 4 material. And then... Um, I don't... Yeah, it doesn't have a pattern. We're just going to leave the pattern off, which means these colors don't really matter. So we're going to leave the pattern off, and we will set uh, the windows to type 3. I like that look. And then the uh, interior, we're going to put it on my favorite, which is uh, Unity. And um, Unity Medium, that's fine. So now our ship is all set. Purchase. Okay. Now let's go look at it in space real quick. And there it is with the darker material. Now you can really see the Aegis lines on it. And uh, obviously when this set was released, um, way back when, um, 
it was during the time that the Tron movie, the new Tron movie, was out in theaters. So this was um, obviously called the uh, Tron set, or making your uh, ships look like a Tron. <laughs> uh, obviously that was the connection made there. But I think it looks really cool. And every ship, it, it looks different on every ship. Some is better than others. Um, for example, the MVAM Prometheus, it doesn't look that great on. Um, they really need to kind of fix the lines on it. But on this ship, it just looks beautiful. And I like the, I kind of like the uh, thicker uh, looking blue lines here on these edges. Uh, I think that looks good. So anyway, the whole thing looks good. Makes the ship look unique. You know, it's something unique. Customize the look of your ship. Everyone likes to have, you know, customized looks and stuff on their ships. And and, and I just love the look of the um, Sovereign here. Anyway, it's sleek. It's aerodynamic. Even though you don't need that in space, it still looks aerodynamic. It's a very sleek ship. It's a very good looking ship. And that Aegis set just uh, enhances it. Okay, let's go dock and take care of my other stuff. So now we have a auto leveling deflector engine and shield once again, which is nice. I won't have to mess with them all the way and forever. I mean, I could totally leave Aegis on even if even at Vice Admiral. However, once I get to a certain level, I'm able to use Borg gear, and um, having the Borg engine and Borg deflector and console is pretty cool. So, but when when uh, when we get to that, I'll show you those options too. All right, so that cost us a lot of money. Unfortunately, we're only down to 3.7 million now, so we do not have <laughs> a lot. One thing I'll do then is I'm going to sell this stuff here. I should have done that earlier gonna go ahead and sell stuff from my old ship. That'll give us a little bit more. I guess I'm gonna sell everything that's Mark 8. That's what I'll do. That'll help. Sell, 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 so, there. That's everything that was Mark 8. Everything else is auto-leveling or doesn't have a level. So now we have 4.1 million energy credits. That's what we have to deal with right now. To work with. Things start getting more expensive the higher rank they are. And Mark 10 is um, almost the highest rank, so... You know, Mark 12 is now the highest, so Mark 10 is right right there at near the highest stuff. So it's going to be the most expensive. We may not be able to get, you know, rare level um, stuff. may have to go for uncommon stuff until I can uh, afford to do something better. But we'll look at it. Okay, first thing I told you, I wanted to get quantum torpedoes. So we're going to look to at uh, ship weapons. We're going to do quantum and uh, make sure to choose uh, lower half. Alright, so uh, just a regular Mark 10 quantum. Pretty cheap. Um, of course, we want better. Let's look at rares first. I'm um, going to Mark 10, you know, rare quantum for 130 is, uh, is not bad at all. Um, let's see, you get one with accuracy, uh, accuracy times two, 140,000. Um, uncommon, with one accuracy, is just 60,000. Since we have a money shortage, uh, right now, um, I'm just gonna get two Mark 10 Uncommons with the accuracy modifier. And, uh, eventually we'll upgrade to better ones. You know, eventually we'll get, you know, we'll have, you know, a lot better. But for right now, to save energy credits, and these are still very good specs, I'm at the highest mark level I can get, and I've got a good modifier with accuracy. Um, I will go ahead and do that. Damage might be another option, but uh, there's one for 65,000. 
Um, accuracy and damage is typically like what I like to get, but uh, well, we'll just stick with accuracy for right now. I can do a lot with that. And that one. Alright, so that's two Mark 10 uh, quantum torpedoes with uh, accuracy. So it's not too bad. It's a good start. And it wasn't too expensive to do that. Alright, now for our um, beam weapons, we can do 3, 4, and 3 aft. So, um, I, I told y'all I wanted to look at anti-proton, but... I may not be able to get anti-proton until upper half. Admiral. Or there's just none on the exchange. <laughs> um, ship weapons. Oh, I was looking at uncommon, that's why. Should have left it any quality. Anti proton. Uh, lower half search. There we go. Okay. Ooh. That is not going to work for us. We got lots of cannons. Uh, there's really not a lot of anti proton options at uh, Mark 10. I think when we get. We have more options. Of course, they're really expensive. Yeah, we have more options for our beam arrays once we get to upper half, but at lower half, anti-proton is really not going to work. Okay. All right, we won't worry about that then. Let's look at the price difference between Tetrion. Let's look at, like, uh, Tetrion beam arrays, or... Yeah, Tetrion Beam Arrays. Okay, I mean, look at that. Well, that's Mark 9. Tetrion Beam Array. Mark 10. Yeah, those are cheap. I mean, look at this. We can, These start at 19,000. I mean, 20,000 a piece. Uh, and we can get six Tetrion Beam Array Mark 10s um, with just one modifier. But um, still, Mark 10, so it's pretty good. That's cheap. That's a good deal. So I may do Tetrion. Let's look real quick though at um, what were our, our other options. Polaron. Oh, they're even cheaper. Look at that. Polaron beam rays. Those are those are really cheap too. Wow, that's not bad. Not bad pricing. And the other option, of course, is phasers. Phasers are more expensive. Look at that. Forty thousand. And plasma, of course. That's cheap too. So pretty much, plasma, tetrion, or um, uh, the other one. <laughs> um, polaron, polaron, plasma, tetrion, blah blah. Anyway, blah blah blah. Lots of types. Uh, if you want to just search pl uh, planet old beam array mark ten, you can do that too. Polaron, plasma. Uh, disruptor, that's another option. I've never, I don't really use disruptors. But anyway, um, so, that's cool. Let's go to rare and see what the price difference is. Plasma start, 30, disruptors, and then so plasmas are the cheapest in the rare variety. Tetrions start getting expensive. 50, 50, 50. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Tetrion. I want to start with Tetrion. I'll, ch I'll, I'll switch to Anti-Proton when we hit upper half. But we'll do Tetrion, not Tetrion Array, Tetrion Beam Array. Mark 10s. And let's see, at Rare, um, yeah, they're 
they're expensive. It would cost like fifty thousand a piece. Would be, uh, you know, a hundred thousand. Uh, it would be three hundred thousand for that. So I'm just going to do uncommon for right now. Again, not the best, but it will save us some money, and down the road we can get better ones as needed. But I'll get two Mark 10 damage, and these have pretty good uh, DPS on them. They got that damage modifier. So we'll get two damage. And an accuracy. And we'll put uh, accuracy, damage, and damage up front. I'd like to have the same back. Put a accuracy. And a damage and damage on the rear as well. And they're starting to get more expensive now. Maybe we won't. I don't want to spend a fortune here. We'll just take the cheapest for now. It's not bad. I mean, it's not the best build right now, all uncommons, but it's not a bad start. And obviously, we will, you know, do better in the future. But it's a start. And we have a ton of engineering consoles. Obviously, ship console engineering, we're going to get. I would like those to be rare. Yeah, EPS for the Mark 10 is uh, 8,500. That's cheap. No problem there. And I might get two of them. In fact, I I do like those a lot. Let's get our what is it? Neutronium. Yeah, Neutronium alloy is all kinetic and all energy resistance. So we've got our EPS, our Neutronium. Still got two left there. Hmm. What to fill them with indeed. Starship hull repair, maybe, I don't know, shield power settings, auxiliary power, uh, crewman resist, because, uh, because I have 800, that may be a good one, and it's too bad I can't get the, uh, shield capacity one yet, that one's awesome, but it takes a science slot now. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do uh, the uh, able crewman resistance and a live crewman resistance. We'll do that, and then a uh, another EPS. There we go. That's a good engineering setup. So basically. Because I have a ton of beam weapons and, and stuff going, the EPSs will get my power levels to where they need to be really fast. The uh, crewman resistance stuff will make sure my crew doesn't die very fast, which will also help my power levels and everything else, my uh, hull repair and everything like that. And then, of course, my um, my uh, alloy for my, um, my hull, giving me kinetic and energy resistance. All right, and for the science consoles, it's obviously got to be a uh, biofunction. They're a little pricey and I don't think I don't think I can get yet the shield thingy. Not till upper half probably.
Uh, that's not it. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get it until later, so... I guess I'll just do another bio function. Now we're doing pretty good on money. 3.7 million left still, so... Definitely doing good on that. And I have good consoles. Now I need Tetrion, um, tactical console, and I'll probably get one for the Quantum. Alright, so console tactical, and we'll look at, um, the Tetrion pulse generators are 120,000 for two of them, but I'm going to do it. That'll really help our uh, beam weapons. Then I'm going to get one for the Quantum Torpedo. And those are cheap. Okay. Now, that's a really good build. I mean, it's not the best uh, torpedoes and phasers, or uh, beam weapons, but still, it's a pretty, pretty good build. Okay, now for myself. I remember I'm using the Jim Hadar stuff. I may replay those missions and get the current level Jim Hadar stuff. Um, until then, um, I'll just keep with the Mark 8 stuff and I'll have to replay to get those weapons. But I do want a better kit. And now that I'm Mark 10, Mark 10 is the highest level kit you can get. So I can actually max out my kit now. Uh, what did I have before? Fabrication Specialists. Maybe it's Breach Engineer? Uh, that has a combat, let's see, uh, yeah. Okay, that had a turret in it. So that's not the one I want. I think it's Fabrication Specialist, let's see. Yeah, I get Seeker Drone 3, Quantum Mortar 3, Medical Generator 3, and Turret 3. That's definitely the one I want, is Fabrication Specialist. And now I'll have the highest end kit you can get with Very Rare, Mark 10. That's the highest kit you can get. So um, there is nothing above that. Like if you go to upper half, see there's nothing there. Mark 10 is the highest level kit you can get. So now I have my kit maxed out. You cannot, I cannot get a better kit anywhere else. So I will never have to upgrade my kit ever again. And I will replay the missions to get me the Jim Hadar Personal Shield Mark 8 and uh, the armor, I mean the uh, Mark 10 and the armor Mark 10 and the mission for this to get the Type 3 Phaser Mark 10 and then I have to get the Jim Hadar weapon Mark 10 as well to complete the set. So I'll replay the missions to get those, so until then I'll just keep with what I'm wearing, which will be just fine. And now my officers, they all have standard Mark 8 stuff, so I will just to save money, give them standard Mark 10 stuff. You know, just kind of upgrade them to the next level. So personal Shields. We'll do Mark 10. And these are cheap, so I can buy, you know, four of these real cheap. And they'll all have the up to date shield, and then now they are armor. I definitely want them to have energy dampening armor. Mark 10. One, two, three, and four. Great. 
Now I can upgrade their weapons too. Um, personal weapons. Uh, see about getting a. Uh, let's see, these aren't too expensive. Let's see, she was using a plasma high density. Uh, she can still use plasma. Let's see. Yeah, see, that's not too expensive. And that's a uh, rare item. That just upgrades her, so... Now she will be good for the Mark 10 shield, the Mark 10 armor. She is now more awesome. My Borg is used... I'm gonna let her continue using that weapon, so we'll just give her the Mark 10 shield. Mark 10 armor. And she's better. My Breen, he's using Polaron. Once I get the CRM, I'll have him use the CRM, but until then, um, obviously not. Oh, that's not how you spell density. Po oh, that's not how you spell Polaron. Polaron. High density beams, only 2,000. Perfect. And give him a Mark 10 shield, Mark 10 armor. Goody. Okay, he is better off. My Jim Hadar uh, was using plasma, but I already have a plasma. See, I've got plasma. I got Polaron. No one's using Tetrion. Tetrion high density. There we go. Now we got several different flavors going. Mark. Oh, whoops. Mark 10 armor. Mark 10 shield. Okay, now he's a lot better. Okay, now they are all good. I would like to give my Jim Hadar a Jim Hadar weapon, but I'll have to replay one of those Jim Hadar missions to do that. My brain will get the CRM once I get it. My Borg, she can continue using that, and my Anar. So we're good. We're good. My bridge crew is good. I'm good right now. I can sell all that stuff. I, I'm, I'm set as far as um, gear goes, and my ship. Ooh, I just cannot wait. Now, don't forget, you have to set your stations. Or else you don't you won't have any powers. So, firstly, I need a commander engineering station is going to be obviously my Borg. And then I need a Lieutenant Commander Engineering Station will be Engineer 1. I need a Lieutenant Science Station, and I only can only use one science person this time. So we'll do Sci Sci 1. Uh let's see, now I've got uh, Three, uh, two tactical spaces here, so we'll do TAC 1. I don't have a TAC 2, but um, I could use my Jim Hadar or my Breen. Uh, so let's see what powers. Beam Array Overload 1. Uh, they both have they both have a power I'd have to change anyway, so we'll, uh, we'll do that. Now all I have to do is go to the uh, power uh, bridge officer power place and um, give all the right powers that I need because now all their powers are screwed up to what I really want for this ship. So let's do that real quick. And that will like bring us to where we need to be. And my kit powers filled their slots automatically because I had them in the same position. Now I got a Quantum Mortar 3, I got a Turret Fab 3. I've got a, a Seeker Drone 3, and I've got a um, Support Drone 2, and that's because I haven't leveled up yet. And when I level up higher, that'll be Support Drone 3. Um, so, um, And all these are very rare, so these are at the top of their DPS chain or whatever. So I'm awesome. <laughs> Basically, I'm awesome. Officer training, okay. And... 
I always do that. First thing I want to look at is my uh, tactical uh, situation here. I have I have those uh, torpedoes now that I, wa I would like to do torp spread on. I want to do beam overload and I want to do torp spread. Um, so my Breen can now actually let's see, tactical space. My Breen can now give me that uh, tactical team one because that's all I'd be able to do there. So Okay, do tactical team one. And then I'm going to let TAC one give me... I've got a choice. I'm either going to be able to do beam overload two and torpedo spread one or beam overload one and torpedo spread two. Well, to be honest with you, the torpedo spread is a lot more fun than the beam overload. <laughs> so I'm going to go with beam overload 1, because we still got, like, tons of beams going. And I'll show you what torp spread 2 does. Torp spread 3 is even more fun, but I can't do that on this ship. <laughs> There's just not going to be an option for that. So, torp spread 3, because that's the lieutenant commander thing is uh, uh, Torp Spread 3, which isn't even on here. It's not, it's trainable, but I mean, you can get it from another officer, but uh, not from the trainer here. But anyway, I wouldn't be able to do it because I don't have the position for it. But anyway, now I got Torp Spread 2, and I got Beam Array Overload 1, and I got Tactical Team 1. So that's going to be my tactical stuff on this ship. Now, my engineering stuff, I have another, I've got a ton of engineering things I can do. Engineering space, I'm going to leave Aceton Beam 3. Could do Eject Warp Plasma, that's fun, but no, I've already got Aceton Beam th level 3 and I don't want to mess that up. Um, so we'll come down to here. And what's in here right now? I do not know. Uh, what was what were you? Engineer one, and you are uh, you're a jet warp, jet warp plasma one. No, that's not what I want. Ugh. <sighs> Let's see, um, what might I want to do here? Um, uh, well, I'm going to lose hazard emitters, because I want to keep polarized hole and I want to keep science team too, so I'm going to need something to cleanse my hole. I will need, um... I will need what's not in this one, which is... Uh, auxiliary to structural? Maybe auxiliary to structural? might do that. Reverse shield polarity, I thought about doing that, but I guess we'll do auxiliary to structural for now. That's a cool power. Uh, 
I don't have a lot of shield heals though. That uh, reverse polarity would really help with shield. But yeah, when we come up come up against the Borg, actually both would help. <laughs> uh, it's so tough. You could do so many different things here. I guess we'll do this for now and see how it goes. And if I need to change it, I will. All right. So now that all that's set, all I have to do is uh, give everyone their skills that they need. Beam overload one and torp spread two. That maxes those, and then Breen. Max tactical team. And my Borg should already be maxed out on everything. And then uh, engineering a one. Now I can get those. Uh, I got to promote him. Her. Now I can give the skills. There we go, now it's visible. And uh, science should be skilled up. Yes. Now my ground skills, everyone should have their ground already maxed up, which they do. So I'm set, everything's maxed as far as I can max it. So that's set up, man. We're doing pretty good. It looks like I'm going to have to spend more points in this tree before it will open up the Admiral tree. I just don't know where to put them into. I don't do that. I don't want that. I guess engine performance is the only thing I'm left with. Mm. No, see that doesn't really bother me. No, and I don't want what's willpower. Um, okay, I guess I'll put skill into this one. Yeah, that sounds good. Just enough to open up the next tree. Which it did not. Maybe because I need more skill points to do that. Oh well. Okay, whatever. I can always change things later. I've got. I should have a ton of uh, respects available to me right now. Oh, a couple of Doff missions are ready, or one is ready. Yay. Okay. Good. I'm set. Everything that I can think of is set. I just have to replay. A bunch of missions. Let's go up and uh, look at our new ship and its abilities and specs. So our default power right now is 110 for weapons power. Look at this 81 on shields. That is a ton of shield power and that's just default. That's awesome. So I love that uh, the Aegis, what, the, what that does to the shield power. I could use faster engines. You know, I, I, I might have should have put some of those points toward the engines instead of willpower. But it does turn better than the Galaxy, at least. I mean, it's not as great. I mean, it's, it's, it's better than the Galaxy. It's not as great as an Escort or anything like that, but... Um, it does turn better than my Galaxy class did anyway. And I could make that even better by improving that engine skill, which would give me more engine power. But anyway, um, those are not bad specs. Let's see, my, my shield is 8990. That's just where I'm going to be at for right now. But as I increase in each grade, that should increase a little. So that will help. Um, my hull is 50,000. Ooh, 7 I mean, that is awesome. When I'm moving at full impulse here, I've got a 42.8% bonus defense. Not bad. 
and uh, only a 15% kinetic resist, but then I've got 23.5 to uh, every type of uh, energy weapon. So, there you go. Those are the specs right now. And put everything on auto fire like I like it. And I will have to organize the tray because it's an absolute mess. I don't like these buttons the way they are. See, that gives a whole hill over time. So that's cool to have. Um, so, that's my ship for right now. Just need to come up with a new name, need to uh, rearrange these icons, and then do a few replays so I can, uh, you know, get better stuff on myself, but this is a pretty good build. This will not be bad. This will actually be pretty fun to play. I like this ship a lot. So, that's it. That's our level 40 rear admiral lower half ship episode a complete episode of nothing but talking and equipping our ship <laughs> which um, is probably boring to a lot of people however I really enjoy it <laughs> that's my kind of thing I like doing all those customizations figuring out what I'm gonna do what kind of build I'm gonna run and all that good stuff configuring it so um, anyway that's that episode in the next episode I'll be I'll have everything done and ready to play uh, war games for our next mission. So we'll get to see this uh, ship in action. So until then, enjoy. <laughs>